Yo, what's good everyone? Infamous Legacy here back with another Hawkeye build and I know what you're thinking. You're like, why are we seeing another Hawkeye build video? Well, with this build video, if you guys haven't seen my custom harm room challenge video, make sure you check that out. I actually did that custom harm room challenge with no damage buff so i wanted to showcase to you my end game content build so this end game content build is basically a split shot arrow build with no damage buff so let's get it started you guys already know i'm going to break down what gear i use where to get the gear showcase you the skill trees mastery primary all that good stuff the champion system and also a quick demonstration on how i use my build and with this build you will actually be able to solo the super adaptoid even probably defeat claw from the discordant raid in one phase if it lets you however keep in mind when more end game content comes out the build will continue to get updated so Think of this as the 175 end game content build. So let's go ahead and start with the gear. Here is the gear part of the video. So before I go ahead and break down to you where to get the gear and what gear I use, let me go over the stats so you guys are aware of what stats I currently have when I'm running end game content that's currently in the game. So defense is 1,858. Defense is decent right now. It did get me through that custom harm room challenge with 195 plus enemies. However, I do recommend if you can try and get it to 2000 to 2500. You might take a little hit on your range of heroic rating because some of the gear pieces that you get might have some resolve and resilience along with precision and valor. Because when I go to the gear, you will see that there are some gear pieces with just precision and valor, but no defense attributes. So definitely aim for 2000 to 2500, which will help you survive a little bit better in these end game content missions. And the reason why I'm telling you to get your defense higher is because there was a recent nerf that happened in the game, which was about in January 2022, if you are watching this video in the future, with comic books. So the nerf was, there's a lot of stats you can get from these comic books. A lot of players who are new to the game are not aware. These comic books actually give you stat bonuses to all your heroes in the game. So what the dev team did at Marvel's Avengers is they nerfed the defensive bonus that you can get. So a lot of players have seen their defense drop a lot. I've seen players with like 5,000 defense, some even had 10,000 defense, so they nerfed it. There is a potential chance in the future they might buff it back again, but we just gotta wait and see. But again, like I said, make sure you aim for 2,000 to 2,500 defense, maintaining a high range and heroic rating. So now going to range and heroic, you guys can see range is 4,648, heroic is 7,687. I definitely would love to have my range rating a lot higher than my heroic rating but the reason that you see these attributes like this or these stats like this is because of the gear I have but eventually you will see my range rating higher and again this build is a split shot arrow build so you definitely want to make sure you have a high range rating because you're going to be depending more on that attribute than your heroic rating. The heroic rating is more targeted towards your critical damage which is also beneficial to that your heroic attacks. So if you guys haven't seen my Nightstorm build, the heroic rating was very high on that build, which did a lot of damage when I used my heroic attacks, especially the Nightstorm arrow. But again, like I said, when I get to the gear, I will explain to you how to get my range rating higher. Cause eventually it is going to get higher than my heroic rating. I'm just missing a couple pieces here and there in terms of getting that range rating higher. So those are the stats. If you guys have any questions or need any clarification regarding the stats, let me know. And on the right side of the screen, you can see a complete breakdown of my hero stats for Hawkeye currently. And I will put again timestamps in the video so you can skip to any part of this video. Now let's go ahead and start with gear. So we're going to go ahead and start with the major artifact, Sacred Nornstone of Lethal Will. The reason I'm using this is because of the increased critical chance with the damage boost. Even though I'm not using a damage buff, I'm still able to activate this artifact to get a damage boost, which gives me a 6.6 .6 increased critical chance when I'm attacking enemies. 
So this is very useful when you are using split shot arrow, bag of tricks, splintering fire, and you're attacking enemies. You will see a, you know, you will notice an increase in your damage when you use this artifact. If you don't want to use this artifact and you want to go for more of like a status effect, you can use the Tachogen. This will give you increased status damage from all attacks. But it's really up to you if you want to do this. This is more targeted to a status effect build. Even though I am, you know, sharing with you guys this split shot arrow battery effect build, you can still use it, but I definitely prefer this one. And sometimes I like switching it, you know, if I'm feeling like, you know what, let me use a Tachogen one day, I will switch it up, but this is the main artifact I like to use, even though I'm not using a damage buff. So, with now minor artifacts, so yellow isolates or blue isolates, you can actually get that. Let's go to the war table. The vendors in the Pacific Northwest outposts will be able to give you that. You need to check daily because they do have really good minor artifacts, which will give you like three stat bonuses, like three valor stats or three precision stats. So, you can go to the Scandinavian Highlands outpost. Or you can go to Utah Badlands Outpost to get those minor artifacts. And the reason I like this yellow ISO 8 artifact is I got this from the Pacific Northwest. You know, did I say Scandinavian Highlands? Hold on. <laughs> so with the Pacific Northwest, I'm talking about that outpost. Sorry, I did say Scandinavian Highlands. There's no outpost there, so ignore what I said there. Pacific Northwest is where I got that Valor Artifact, which also gave me this amazing perk of Mighty Boon. Mighty Boon, 5% increased critical hit chance with power attacks. Your power attacks are basically split shot arrow, splintering fire, and bag of tricks. So this is a great piece to have. And I will even combine this with another artifact, like maybe like a blue ISO. I eventually might do that if I do come across like a good blue ISO artifact. The one I currently have does have the heroic charge rate. However, it does not have the three slots of precision. So I'm hoping in the future I do get that with that perk. And if I'm lucky enough, I might even be able to get a second perk on this blue ISO 8 with Mighty Boon, because then it will also give me an additional critical hit chance with power attacks. So yeah, you can get yellow minor artifacts from those outposts and blue ones from the outposts. Check every day on reset time. The missions and raids reset. Well, the raids reset Thursday, 12 p.m., 1 p.m. Eastern. However, villain sectors, the vendors all reset daily at 1 p.m. or if you're on the central coast, central time, 12 p.m. But again, around that time. If you're international, you guys are probably aware of when it resets, but definitely always check those vendors. So Pacific Northwest and the Ant Hill outpost as well. Now going to the, oh yeah, sorry, forgot to mention, <laughs> keep forgetting this. If you can't find those artifacts in the outpost, you can run missions, so like vault missions and open loot boxes, there is a chance you will get an epic artifact from there. Or when you're running other missions as well, try and open those loot boxes in those missions so you have a chance to get these epic artifacts that will probably give you a yellow ISO 8 or a blue ISO 8. Most of the time, legendary like gold loot boxes have a higher chance of giving you these yellow ISO 8s. And if you really want, I did forget to also mention another thing. You can run the Utah Badlands raid mission. Where is it? So let's go back to Utah Badlands. We have something called the OLT or Omega Level Threat Family Reunion. Every Thursday on raid reset time, if you run this mission, it does award you like an artifact, which is called like a cosmic like a cosmic artifact, which has dual stats. What I what I mean by dual stats is it can come with precision and valor and proficiency. So having an artifact like that and even possibly like a heroic charge rate on it will also be beneficial if you're looking for artifacts. But with that one, you can only do that weekly for you to get an artifact. But if not, just run those missions, like I said, open loot boxes, go to the outpost, and there is a chance you can get these yellow isolates or blue isolates. 
Next one, I have the Nornstone of the Fearless. This actually has something called Perk Breaker as the first perk. If people are not aware, the Perk, perk Breaker is actually a perk that helps with payload attacks. So since I am using a Vibranium payload on my range piece, which I will be showing you, this will increase the damage from that gear perk by 200%. So it is very beneficial when you're using payload attacks. A lot of people had this confused with damage buffs. It does not apply to damage buffs. If it did, that would just be crazy OP, but it only takes effect on payload attacks. If I really didn't want to use this, I can replace this, like I said, with the blue ISO 8. Sometimes I like to switch it up, but the reason I'm using this is because of the, my vibranium payload on my range piece. And to get this piece, you can go to Wakanda and run the Discordant Sound Elite Raid or the regular raid. There is a chance to get it. The Elite Raid, after you beat it every week, it does give you two artifacts, so you have a better chance of getting it from the Elite Raid than the regular raid. And then going back to the piece, you also want to make sure you can get Valor Proficiency and Precision. I have Valor Might and Proficiency, so instead of the Might, I'd rather get Precision. So that's where you get that. Now let's go ahead to our other gear pieces. That was a breakdown of the artifacts. Heroic piece, Operator's Kit. You can get that from the Priority Threat Mission that happens weekly. Today's Priority Threat Mission is located in the future wasteland. So if you're watching this, it is going to eventually change regardless. This is where you can get that Heroic piece. And the Priority Threat Mission resets every Thursday as well. You can only do it once a week unless they have an event going where you can do it every day. But that's, this is where you get it from. And the stats on this, Valor, Resolve, Precision, that's what you want to aim for. The perks are amazing. Recovery Arrow increases the duration by 10 seconds. Locked on breaker, 20% increase in damage while locked on is active. And then also the last perk, locked on resonance, 3% increase in willpower and heroic energy. So the 3% increase in heroic energy really helps refilling your heroic meter so you can use your heroic abilities faster. So that's a heroic piece. You can get that from the priority threat mission. Moving on to the discordant battle armor elite. So with this piece right here, I was very lucky to get Valor and Precision on it. And I really like that last perk, Split Multiplier. So to get this piece, you can only get it in the Elite Discordant Sound Raid. You cannot get this anywhere else. It's only in the Discordant Sound Elite Raid. So with these gear pieces remember this is an end game content build so if you are able to run the claw raid in the elite raid you definitely want to aim for pieces like this one thing i will mention with this gear piece the split multiplier is what helps you with the split shot arrow build however the second perk instead of the second perk what i would have preferred was reverberation drive because inflicts 25 percent additional damage to enemies you know, inflicted by Vibranium. So when I'm using Vibranium payload and I have these enemies, you know, inflicted with that, I will be able to do 25% increased damage on those enemies. So that's the only thing I'm missing on this piece. I have the split multiplier, but I do not have the re reverberation drive. The reverberation drive is on my Nightstorm build. So that is pretty good. However, I definitely want it on this piece as well. And the Sonic Conduit buff is basically like a small kind of status effect you can get. I'm not going to go really in depth about it. What I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to put a blog post or a link to a blog post by the Avengers dev team about the perk breaker and the Sonic Conduit buff to give you guys a breakdown on what it is and how it works. So make sure you check out that link in the description when I do put it out. Moving on to the range piece. Range piece, amazing stats right here. Valor, precision, resilience. I have razor arrows and cluster arrows that deal sonic damage. You also have the sonic conduit buff. Instead of the sonic conduit buff, what I would have preferred actually for the first perk was actually this right here. Vibranium double leak. 
So attacking an enemy with vibranium damage that has an active sonic status effect will spread this vibranium onto multiple enemies. This perk, if I can get this exact range piece with precision and valor and resilience, or even precision and valor, I would 100% replace this piece I have right here. Because the vibranium leak, when you are fighting a bunch of enemies, it is so beautiful to see these leaks spreading and seeing the status effect spread as well. Because remember, when I'm attacking an enemy with Vibranium damage, that's coming from your third perk, which is the Vibranium payload. And then the Sonic status effect comes from your second perk and also your melee piece, which I will be showing to you. So if I can get the first perk on this piece right here with these stats, I will be lucky. But again, the RNG gods are still trying to, you know, you know, they're trying to tell me that I got to run the raid a lot more for me to get that piece because they haven't been good with me. So hopefully the RNG the RNG gods bless me and I will eventually get that Vibranium double leak plus those two other perks I have on these pieces. And you can get that again from the Discord and Sound Elite Raid or the regular raid. You definitely want it if you're able to run the Elite Raid more often because you are able to get better stats on the Elite gear than the regular gear. Moving on to the last piece, we got the Discordant Blade. Also same thing, you can get it from the Discordant Sound Elite Raid or the Discordant Sound Regular Raid. Oh yeah, before I go into that, if you really want to go with the damage buff, you guys really can. You can go with the targeted buff. It's really up to you. But again, this doesn't come with the Vibranium Payload. And this build, like I said, this is more of like a battery effect build where I'm not using a damage buff. And I still do a lot of damage like you guys have seen. But with a targeted buff, if you really want to get that critical attack damage going, you can get this targeted buff Sonic piece from Wakanda, running these Wakanda missions, opening loot boxes, destroying the Corrupted Vibranium, or you can go with the other targeted buff piece I have, or the proficient buff I have, which I use on my Nightstorm build. The proficient buff, if you really want to use this, you can get it from running the Tachyon Rift missions. You gotta be very lucky because I was lucky in getting this piece. But you can get it from Tachyon Rift missions, similar to these ones right over here. So let's go, where is it? So Tachyon Rift missions like this, or you can wait for the Tachyon Anomaly event to come back where you can get it, where you can get an exotic for all your characters. That's probably the best time to try and farm for a proficient buff Tachyon Surge piece. Because with this piece, it actually does damage buff and also a Tachyon Surge, which I find better than this piece. Even though this is the only Sonic range piece you can get with the damage buff, I still prefer this and I will combine it with my melee piece which has Sonic. So I'm getting that warm and cold status effect damage going which creates that battery effect. Because if you guys are not aware, Cryo, Gamma, Shock, Sonic are your cold status effects and you always want to make sure you can combine those with warm status effects on your other piece with either Vibranium, Plasma, uh, Pym, and there's one more, Vibranium, <laughs> Plasma, Pym, and Cosmic. So Cosmic is obviously what's on this piece, so if you combine a warm and cold status effect, you'll be doing a lot more damage than just having the same status effect on your range and melee piece with your Hawkeye build. But again, like I said, up to you guys if you want to use a damage buff build. Um, this is more of like a split shot arrow build with no damage buff because there is a potential chance where damage buff might get nerfed. So if it does get nerfed, we are going to lose out on a lot of those damage buff perks. And we might not be able to do a lot of damage like we used to with these targeted buff perks or proficient buff perks. So that's why I'm going with this piece because it also gives me the vibranium payload and I feel like the battery effect still does a lot of damage when you combine vibranium and sonic together. Now going back to the melee piece, again you guys saw where I get that from. This one also has a sonic conduit buff, 
when you're defeating an enemy with the vibranium status effect it will send a sonic conduit buff to all your teammates and then those teammates are considered sonic conduit receivers like i said explaining the sonic conduit i will put the blog post in the description so you guys can check it out and learn about what the sonic conduit buff is so the second perk balance screen light combo finishers and split shot arrows deal sonic damage this is great to have the reason i like the sonic status effect is it also helps you recharge your heroics a lot faster and then it'll give you the opportunity to use your heroics a lot more and then the third perk i have is recovery multiplier which increases the duration of recovery area by 10 seconds this is actually very good and i was very lucky to get this because it goes well with my heroic perk of recovery amplification so i'm currently like getting like 20 seconds of recovery arrow and this is very good especially when you're in a supporting role as well and it also helps out because when you put down recovery arrow when we go into a skills tree you will see it can increase your critical damage so this is the melee piece the reason i didn't go with vibranium is because i do get the vibranium payload and i have sonic here so that is the gear if you guys again have any questions let me know in the comments below this is a split shot arrow build with no damage buff i do need to make sure you guys are aware of that but if you want to throw a damage buff you can it's really up to you but if it does get nerfed you might want to try this build now let's go ahead with skills and i'll show you guys what i have with that so we're in skills right now so before we go into a specialty mastery and champion system what i definitely want to mention is when you're using your skills this is where the main focus is split shot arrow is your power attack and if you guys weren't aware i was talking about that artifact right mighty boon gives you an increased critical chance when you're using your split shot arrow so i am going to be demonstrating to you guys you know how to use the attacks properly and when you're fighting enemies but the main again focus is split shot arrow bag of tricks and also splintering fire and i also like using let me see if i can find it suspension arrow so these things right here is where you want to focus so in the heavy attack column that's where you want to really focus on your split shot arrow, suspension arrow, splintering fire, and bag of tricks. So now let's go ahead into specialty. I'm not really going to break down anything too much because I've explained a lot of this in my other build videos. So if you want a really in-depth explanation of my skill trees, I'm practically using the same skills from my Nightstorm build. So if you want to check that out, I will leave a link in the description. However, I will go over a couple things when I'm going through this build. So let's go with support heroic. I'll quickly show it to you guys. Critical attack, critical care. This will increase your critical attack chance by 20%. And critical attack damage. Heroic recharge, great for, you know, defeating enemies within that, hero, like that recovery arrow circle and they have a chance to drop a heroic orb will increase your charge rate assault heroic ability we're using fire devil the one thing i will recommend is when you're fighting claw just to slow him down i will probably switch to hailstorm hailstorm doesn't do as much damage but for some reason when you're fighting claw and you're using a cryo status effect there is a chance where you can slow him down so definitely recommend that and keep in mind when you're using these one of these three night storms you're actually also creating a battery effect because i'm using fire devil which creates plasma and then you see my sonic and also vibranium coming from my melee and range piece and then i'm also doing shock damage if you're not aware with my heroic ultimate ability definitely do not recommend using this because it is using you know shock damage however you're already getting your shock damage from your ultimate heroic ability so when you're fighting claw like i said use hailstorm if you want to to see if it slows down if not you can just go ahead and use fire devil fire devil is probably one of the strongest which deals the most damage however you know you can try whichever one you want i went with fire devil Next, we have Strike Point increased status build for all damage by Nightstorm by 30%.
ultimate heroic ability. So this is where I was referring to the shock damage. So this is where you can see it, Twin Talons. And then when you're defeating a lot of enemies, like, you know, in a group and you're using Hunter's Arrow, there is a chance they will also drop a heroic orb. So again, these heroic orbs that they drop, like whether it's from your support ability or ultimate heroic ability, it's really useful because it will increase your charge rate faster. So that's a specialty. Let's quickly go over to mastery. Not really gonna break, break it down, but I'll just go through it so you guys know what I'm using. If you do have questions, let me know in the comments below. Okay, so we're in the champion system right now. So like I was talking about earlier with the nerf to defense currently in the game, I highly recommend when you guys are, you know, working on your champion system, you can do a couple things. Really up to you if you want to do this. I went with, you know, this was before I was increasing my perk chance. So I've, you know, increased the activation rate of perk chance boost so i try to max that out then i went with defense you definitely want to get the fortification boost all maxed out so you just have that extra defense and then another one was increase your charge rate of all heroics this is another one to, to have eventually if hawkeye is your main hero that you use in the game you will probably max out your entire champion system but if you are starting off with Hawkeye, you want to figure out what to max out first. Fortification boost, perk chance boost, heroic charge rate boost, critical chance boost, critical damage boost, status and stun damage, because again, this is not a damage buff build, so it's great to have that status damage to apply on your enemies. Range damage boost, heroic damage boost and also melee damage boost but that you can leave to last don't even worry about that so those this is a champion system as you guys know hawkeye is one of my main heroes that's why you see most of the champion system already maxed out if you do have any questions about this part of the video again like i said let me know in the comments below so i've broken down the skills and everything now let's go ahead and show you a demonstration quick demonstration of the build actually let's go all right everyone so we are in the custom harm room right now so what i'm going to do for you is i'm going to quickly demonstrate to you what attacks to use when you're fighting any enemies in the game and also just a quick demonstration of this split shot arrow battery effect build so let's get it started first with suspension arrow suspension arrow is basically a melee and range attack that you do and it will bring these enemies together in this vortex or tornado if you want to call it and then you can start hitting them with split shot arrow bag of tricks and then splintering fire so what suspension arrow it is great when there's a lot of enemies around you but it only works when they're like close to you so it is kind of like a melee attack and the only downfall of this move is there is a chance where you will get interrupted if you do get interrupted you do have to try and go from a distance like so start from afar and then go into it or if you have a wall like this you can get behind the wall because suspension error does go through the wall currently in the game and all the enemies will come behind it and get grouped up together and then you go into your bag of tricks your split shot arrow and your suspension arrow so now what we're going to do is before i go to the terminal right over there i'm actually going to showcase to you how to use your artifact and also your heroic attacks so going back to the artifact i don't know if i missed this but like i said 
There's no damage buff on this build. So the second perk here, increased duration of all damage buffs by four seconds, that actually will not work. So the reason I like using this artifact is 6.6% .6 increased critical chance when damage boost is active. So this actually creates a damage boost when you're doing damage. I did explain this to you earlier you can use attack on artifact as well if you want to increase status damage however this will increase your critical attack chance or your critical chance when you're fighting enemies and it is like a damage boost but not a damage buff so again no targeted buff on this this is strictly battery effect so let's go ahead I'm not going to do this whole custom harm room challenge again, so we're going to keep it simple. If you want to check out that video and see how this build is, check it out in the link in the description below. <laughs> I almost messed up there. So the link, I will put it in the description below for that video. So we're just fighting some proto synthoids, brutal difficulty. So you can see they're all coming towards me. I'm going to actually use suspension arrow. So I almost got interrupted there. Then I go into my split shot arrow, suspension arrow, all that good stuff. Now in terms of using artifacts, so what you're gonna do is, let's hit them once. Oh, didn't hit them. You're gonna use your artifact, recovery arrow, hunter's arrow, and then go into night storm. And then that's when you start hitting these enemies. And there you guys can see the vibranium payload. So again, you're going to see the Vibranium payload get onto these enemies. When I hit them with Split Shot Arrow with Sonic, it does more damage. And with this build, you can see my Heroic Charge Rate is charging up very quickly. So again, if Recovery Arrow, Hunter's Arrow, Night Storm, and then if you want, go into Splintering Fire. Someone asked me earlier, or recently, how do you stay in the air so long? How is your hang time so long? So what I tell them is when I go into like, let's say, let's go ahead and try and get Hunter's Arrow again. So quickly just defeat these enemies. All right, I just cleared that harm room. So I will explain to you how long I last in the air. It's quite easy to be honest. You just gotta do the combo. So we're gonna quickly go back to this terminal. Let's use the claw enemies, claws company. All right, so we got a bunch of them right there. Those annoying spiders are here too. So go into your, oh, go into recovery arrow, hunter's arrow, Splintering Fire, Night Storm, Splintering Fire, and then just like that. So you can honestly probably repeat that whole thing the same way. So get into your combos going, Recovery Arrow, Hunter's Arrow, Splintering Fire, Night Storm, Splintering Fire, Night Storm, Splintering Fire, <laughs> Night Storm, <laughs> Splintering Fire. <laughs> That's how I do it. That's how I go ahead with my combos if I do not get interrupted. So yeah, that's basically it. Let's go ahead and reset it and I'll do a quick overview on what I just did. Okay, quick overview of what I just did. You guys saw I went into the whole suspension arrow. I went into the combos with the heroics splintering fire you guys saw how long i was able to stay in the air if you do not get interrupted you can honestly stay in the air forever it really just depends on your heroics being recharged so that was the demonstration now to the end of this video i just wanted to let you guys know i appreciate all the support you guys have given me i know i haven't really been active on the channel but i am promising you guys it is going to start becoming active again i am going to be actually showcasing to you guys more marvel avengers build videos but we're also going to be exploring other content and i will leave that in another video in the future explaining to you what content you will see from me and what other ventures we will you know go into so 
Thank you again for the support. Please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Like I said, more build videos on the way for Marvel's Avengers, but the future's looking bright. Till next time, you guys stay safe, take care. I'm out. Peace.